Hey everybody, my name is Ian. I work at the Fort Worth Public Library and every second Saturday of the month we have the Maker Showcase. I'm super excited today to talk to Wendy Bowie, who is going to talk to us about her maker talent, which you may not think is technically a maker talent, but trust me, there's a lot of different maker talents out there. Hi, Wendy. Yeah, so what I do, my maker talent is graphic design. Um, that would be um, an art skill. I have, do have a fine arts foundation, but I have applied that to um, creating things on the computer, even if it starts with sketching, creating things on the computer for uh, businesses, for their um, promotion, marketing, advertising, and all things like that, from logos to banner ads um, to even um, flyers and posters and all of those different kinds of fun things. Awesome. That's a uh, very interesting. And again, many people may not think of that as a maker talent, but that really is a maker talent because you are making a lot of things from that. Um, you kind of talked a little bit about uh, what it is to be a graphic designer, but let's, let's go back. How did you become, how did you get interested in becoming a graphic designer? So when I was like a little kid, I I wanted to be a graphic designer, which sounds crazy, but I had the opportunity. I was, you know, I was always drawing and, um, you know, making things with my hands and with the, the kind of materials you would have around your house, even before you could get on the computer. Um, this is going to blow your mind, but before the internet was invented and, and um, I was always looking for a practical way as I got older to use those sorts of things. Um, don't ever let anybody tell you, you can't make money with art. That's not true. <laughs> um, so when I was maybe 10 ish, maybe younger, my mom was finishing her associate's degree and there were these like kid computer classes. And of course this was a really novel idea at the time because like we didn't even have the internet in our classroom. We just had a network we could play Mortal Kombat on. And <laughs> So I would want to finish my work so I could do that. But um, it was this class where we would make business cards and do all these kinds of things. And of course, at the time we were just using clip art. And now as a professional graphic designer, I design my own logos and you know do all of those kinds of things. But the idea of putting all of that stuff together was like the first time I'd seen that. And I realized that, that though, all of those things that you see everywhere when you just like look around you, they come from somewhere. So, and that's where I first got that idea. And um, <clears throat> I sort of branched out a little bit as I got older and realized um, commercials had concepts and that kind of thing. That's graphic design. And then there's art direction, which is more conceptual advertising. And I've done both in my career. Um, today, I was just gonna focus on graphic design um, for simplicity's sake, but I'm happy to answer any questions about advertising and art direction as well. Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. I just went from coloring to the computer to college. <laughs> awesome. So you, you have a degree in what, what is your degree in? I have a bachelor of fine arts in, uh, in specifically in art direction, which covered off on graphic design and all of those other things. Very cool. A lot of times here on the maker showcase, a lot of our makers do this as a hobby or do this at, in their spare time, but this is, this is your job, right? This is my job. It was, it started as a hobby, you know, we were talking about like the background and that kind of thing. Obviously I didn't have a job back then. I was just making things um, and I did it for fun. And um, I still do it for fun. You know, like I'll design things for friends' parties or for presents for people, um, stuff for myself, whatever. Um, but I do it as a job. I do get paid for it. And I even had one of those moments um, the other day where I was, just, I was like sketching out ideas for logos. It was just like, I'm getting paid to draw all day. Like how lucky am I? Um, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, if you have to be, you know, you want to go to school, you want to get prepared and, you know, so you can be competitive, but if you find a way to be competitive and really hone your talent, you can do what feels like a hobby as a job. Absolutely. And in graphic design is so important because you, you kind of touched on it a little bit as you're driving down the street or walking through a store, there's logos and graphic design 
surrounding you everywhere. You really can't escape it. It's it's everywhere and ingrained in our society today. So it, it's become a very important thing because, well, I'll let you talk about it a little bit. What kind of inspires your graphic designs? At the basic level, it's making the world prettier and make more sense. Um, there's a lot of really bad graphic design out there. You, um, let's just take, um, let's take a concert poster, for example. Um, you've seen, all seen posters for um, concerts, theater, any, any type of event, and it looks like somebody maybe just threw it together in Microsoft Word, which is where you should be writing your research papers, not designing things. And, <clears throat> you know, you'll, you might not know why as the consumer, like walking by, but you'll feel like it's not right. It won't get your attention. You may never know it exists. You don't remember it. Um, it's just generally ugly. You don't necessarily have to know why, but it's things like the typeface isn't appropriate for what you're doing. The colors aren't appropriate. The scale of all the things aren't working together. Um, maybe there's some kind of like illustrated graphic in it that doesn't make sense or that isn't beautiful. Um, there's all these things that you feel even if you aren't doing the work and don't know what all that means. And of course that upsets me very much. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so I'm always striving to show people, businesses, um, organizations that they can have this like smart, strategic, beautiful thing that communicates well and sets them apart from everyone else. So um, it's not necessarily that I like the challenge. It's not that it's just satisfying. It's like really satisfying to do that. Um, and then like personally, my why is just that it's something that feels um, constructive, you know, in a world of you're always like fixing something or you're always taking something apart. And, you know, these are crazy times. And I feel like, I feel lucky to be doing something that's like, well, I guess this is a maker showcase, but that's making something, that's doing something constructive, that's putting something together or building something or making it more beautiful or improving and creating. And those kind of things get me into like, get me into a flow, you, which you might hear from other artists where you kind of get in that, that pattern that makes you, you know, you're concentrating and you feel good and the productivity is coming out of you. Um, and that's just sort of like, that inspires me. Like it feels good to do that, you know? Um, and then I can pass that on to other people. And I think that's kind of what makes it feel less job-like. I mean, obviously I need to buy food. I have to pay rent, you know, I want to go, I want to have money to go do things and have fun and travel. That's, that makes it feel like a job. But when I'm really, really in the flow and doing my work, I'm, I'm just doing what I like to do. So that's my personal why. That's awesome. And a lot of people talk about their, their flow. So you're right. Artists and makers of all kinds have that kind of headspace that they get into where they can really create and have a lot of fun. Now there's a running joke of uh, you should never use comic sans for different businesses. Do you fall into that category? Yeah. There is one instance that it's okay to use comic sans and it is not for graphic design and not for businesses. It's actually considered a really accessible font. Um, so if there were any learning disability or um, any sort of um, any, any sort of mental disability or anything, that kind of thing, because it looks like a really simple handwriting, it's easier for them to tell the characters apart so and recognize the patterns. And so you might, as a teacher, do worksheets that way um, because it's just more accessible. There's other fonts that do that too. But, um, but if you were like on my design team and you brought me something in Comic Sans, <laughs> you will not. You will make that mistake exactly one time. <laughs> It's well, that's very, that's really interesting. I had no idea that it was, it was this accessible font. I learned something new today. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. <laughs> and the, the reason it doesn't work for like a typical design is I, I would challenge you to bring to the table an instance where it makes sense uh, aesthetically for the brand that it's meant for. Um, and also it's sort of like, when you're writing and you see the word good, well, is it good or could it be great or excellent or something like a little more specific and um, 
elevated, you want to do that with every aspect of design too. So if you are using Comic Sans because it's playful or childlike or youthful or something like that, I would challenge you to pick something a little more bespoke than that. So you're not just using Comic Sans. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, that's very cool. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, I was just kind of offhandedly running that as a joke. Cause that's like one of the jokes that's out there about, very graphic about it. So. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I love it. Now, um, are there people that have inspired you along your journey that, that kind of helped you get into it or even work with you, uh, today? Um, I think it started with and, and like I guess continues to be inspire me my teachers were adjunct teachers um in, in parts some of my classes and seeing that they liked what they did and liked it well enough that they wanted to share it with other people I was like oh well okay well this is a thing that you know I can see the passion part of it through their eyes instead of just like shadowing somebody that's going to work every day like of course you have to go to work every day but somebody that wants to like bring it outside of work and like share it with people, I thought that that made it, that made it seem pretty legit. Like I could do that. Um, and the, you know, that, that passion that it sounded hard and it sounded like, you know, it is a job and it is challenging, but that they wanted to come share it with me um, at, you know, the very low adjunct teacher salary showed <laughs> their passion, you know, um, so that was a big inspiring thing for me. Um, I think in the, you know, if I go like to today, a lot of that, what inspires me now is, um, you know, social media is bittersweet. You know, there's good things and bad things. I love following other designers on social media, on graphic, on uh, um, Instagram, and seeing them share things and doing things just because they want to do it or um, just like the vulnerability of sharing a work in progress isn't about having something that's perfect. It's about um, sharing something because you love it, because you want to share it with people. And that kind of gets you out of that like job-like mind frame and like the stressful perfection mind frame and gets you into a place of like passion and creation and beauty. Um, so that's probably the biggest inspiration I have today. And something you might not know about me is I spent um, 15 years at agencies, advertising agencies, design agencies. And a couple of years ago, I left on my own on purpose to work for myself. <laughs> And, you know, you, you meet freelancers that are doing it because, you know, there's, there's these times that are, you know, they get laid off or they, um, they can't find a good fit or whatever. And I just got this idea in my head that I could do this. And um, I was inspired by other, um, like, freelance leaders, I guess, like, women in particular, um, that they, they did it. They, they built a business on their own and they're fine and I can do that. And, you know, agencies are complicated places. So you look at that and you think you can't do it on your own and you don't have to do all the things the agency's doing. You can focus on design and, um, you know, I don't have employees anymore. I, I don't have to meet with the CFO because I am the CFO. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I was inspired in a way, you know, you can't just be an artist. You, you're a business person, you're an employee, you're a leader, you're all of those different things. Sometimes you're manager. So you also have to draw inspiration. That's a little more leadership savvy. And so that was a huge part of this and gives me the confidence to just focus on the, the design work because I'm not worrying about my business all the time. So, yeah. Man, that's that had to be scary to ramble. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I, it must have been scary to 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 walk out the door and and strike strike it out on your own. I guess. Well, I thought that for a while, like 
for the last half of my career. Um, the first half, I was like, I would never do that. The second half, I was like, man, I really, I really want to do that. I want that, that freedom and flexibility that it provides and that kind of thing. But then once you get the confidence to do it, be it because of uh, mentors of yours or um, the support, my boyfriend, like just being like, you, you know, it's fine, whatever happens, let's try this out. Um, so once you get to that point, it's not scary. It's actually really fun to leave <laughs> because you just know that you're doing what you, you know, need to be doing. So, yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I didn't have, I didn't always have a lot of encouragement that I could do things myself. I define that as an adult. Um, and I'm really glad that I did because I like could have spent the rest of my life not doing this. So. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on that note, just to conclude <laughs> that I would say, I would encourage everybody to find mentors, not just in their discipline and not just like with their craft, but people that you admire as like, as leaders, as managers, as business owners, um, and people that do different things than you do, you know, like writers or producers or whatever it might be. Um, because a lot of your inspiration really does come from that. Absolutely. No, that's great. Um, and in, in graphic design, there is a process and that process does involve feedback. How do you deal with feedback when you've created, you know, an ama- what you feel like is an amazing campaign or amazing piece of work, and then you get the feedback from somebody? How do you deal with that? Um, you, you get a really thick skin in college. Um, your portfolio classes will kind of work that out of you. <laughs> um, you just learn to not take it so personally. And if you're lucky you have an instructor and peers that give you that safe space to like play in and shake it off. You know, um, if you don't, you're going to be taking things too seriously and, um, which it is, it is serious because it's your job, but too seriously, I guess like personally is not personal. Um, and if it is personal, then you don't want that client anyway. (laughs) So you just, it, it takes practice. I know it's, it's weird because it's not like, like a technical skill or something, but emotional things take practice too. And, um, not taking things so personally is, is hard. And it was hard for me in particular because I grew up in an environment where everything was supposed to be perfect. And if it wasn't, then you were questioned on, you know, where the rest of the points are, or if you redid this, would it be better or whatever? And I'm like, I don't know, I want to do something else. So, <laughs> so you, you sort of like practice being vulnerable and sharing and open. And when you get feedback, it's not, um, all feedback should be constructive feedback. It might not be worded how you want it to be worded because everybody speaks differently and is dealing with their own demons, but all of it's constructive, all of it's meant to make it better. And everybody's working toward the same thing. So when I get feedback, like in the instance you're talking about where I think I did the most amazing thing in the world, And then somebody comes back with some other stuff. It's like, they didn't, they're not going against my work. They're going against my expectations. And my expectation is that they think that this is the most amazing thing in the world. Who wouldn't think that? And then they obviously have a difference of opinion because they're head somewhere else and they want something different. And at the end of the day, I'm not doing it for me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not paying me. They are. And, um, you know, it is, it is a job at the end of the day. Um, you need to, you know, the customer's always right. <laughs> you know, sometimes it might not be what you wanted aesthetically. You might not think it's going to be the most effective thing in the world, but if that's really, really what they want after discussing it, um, even if there's a difference of opinion, I don't, I don't let them know that it's a difference of opinion because they're not here for my judgment. Um, I just remind myself that we're all working toward the same thing. All feedback is constructive feedback. Um, And we just will have different expectations for it. So um, that's a lot of practice. You gotta, you gotta like shake off the personal things and all that stuff. Yeah. That's one thing makers always have to deal with is, is feedback, even if it's, even if they don't ask for feedback, there there's going to be feedback on their projects 
um, that they put out on display or put out on the internet or put on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you're going to get feedback no matter what. So it's really good to hear some advice on, on how to work with that feedback and how to understand it and kind of interpret it. Um, so that's really awesome. Thank you for, for talking about that. So um, for someone who is interested in getting into graphic design or, you know, a kid or a teenager, even an adult, what advice would you give for, for them to, to get started? I would say um, you start, it always starts with um, fine arts, with drawing, with the, the, the standard traditional things. Um, you need to be drawing and making and creating all of the time and expose yourself to a lot of different things and, you know, go to museums, read books, um, see what's out there, follow um, people that do all different kinds of maker crafts and that kind of thing. Um, don't ever let your guard down and just get into a routine of doing something and then not get, be seeking out that inspiration and that natural creativity. Um, I, I follow a, a graphic designer that was talking about falling out of love with drawing and now he's gotten back into, he makes a point to do it every day when he first gets to the office. Um, so I think that he, you just don't make time for those things, sort of things after a while and you forget and you don't leave your house and you, you know, you just get busy. So I would say, you know, start with that, with the inspiration and the actual, just do anything, make something. Um, I would encourage everyone to um, go to portfolio school, whether that is um, a state university, a four-year university that has a really, really strong portfolio program. Um, I happen to go to a state university. I didn't necessarily go to something called a portfolio school, which is kind of, um, which would, is usually a private program that you do after you um, graduate from you know, a two or four year university. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to portfolio school at a four year university. Um, it was a really rigorous program and had the most credit hours of any degree at the university at the time. Um, it, was, it was hard, but it prepared me for what I do. And um, I, I'm not like, I don't go to work every day thinking like, oh, I miss stuff. I hope I can do this. Like I'm prepared for it. Um, so definitely go to a portfolio school. Um, it would be very hard to just jump in and um, do all the things without having the instruction of my adjunct teachers and all of that. It happens. You know, there are people that come from all different backgrounds and transition. Um, whatever you do, as long as you can put together a competitive portfolio that shows your skills, um, that's fine. You know, I, I had an employee once that actually like worked at a coffee shop, but he just like designed stuff for himself and was self-taught and was very talented. Um, I, I've had that twice um, in my career that I've had employees that didn't go to school for it per se, but that's extremely unusual. Um, and I have not, I have not seen a portfolio from somebody that just kind of dabbled and didn't get proper instruction, um, be prepared for their career. Um, so I would encourage that, um, definitely going to college to uh, a school that has a great portfolio program, ideally with adjunct teachers that work in the industry. Um, so you get a feel for that. Um, definitely an internship, um, you know, there, there are definitely exceptions. Like you could maybe some of the smaller um, shops sometimes hire people as long as you have a good portfolio that like doesn't necessarily have a traditional background. But if it's possible, I would encourage you to do an internship. Um, there's nothing that replaces that. Like it's more important than college. <laughs> um, it's just, it's a place that you can make mistakes and grow and you can shake off the whole feedback thing that we're talking about earlier. Um, and there's, it's, it's irreplaceable. There's nothing like that. that. That's super important. Wendy, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And where can people find you uh, in the online space? You can find my portfolio at wendybuoy.com. 
Um, that just showcases my work. And then I post um, current and new things um, and, and sometimes like ideas and, uh, and tips and tricks for, you know, business owners and other designers at, uh, on Instagram. And that is Wendy Bowie Creative is the handle there. Um, and then obviously I have LinkedIn. Artists and makers still have to have LinkedIn. Uh, but mainly I, I just, I use Instagram regularly and then I also have that portfolio. Very cool. Thank you so much, Wendy. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today and telling us all about graphic design. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll see everybody next time. Bye guys. Bye.